If you come back, I swear, I'll be more fun. I won't be dark. I won't have AIDS. I'll change my blood. I'll have it drained and replaced with rose water. I won't bleed. I won't whine. I won't think. I'll learn to shop and like it. I'll wear nice shoes. I'll cut my toenails. I'll get a manicure for you. I won't talk about dying friends or when I was in a wheelchair and how I learned to walk again. I know that makes you nervous. I'll hide my medicines. I won't have nightmares. I won't expect you to think or talk. I won't be messy. I won't share my romance with death with you. I won't tell you. The dream I had that I jumped out of an airplane, flying over trees and mountains and buildings, finally to land in an alley and said that was a good way to die. It was sunny and very bright. I know you dream of flight, but love of death eludes you. Although you must have some of it to be with me, you knew the risks. But if you come back, I'll no longer be an emissary of death. I'll go skipping everywhere, put on angels' wings and scatter joy like confetti through the air. Clouds of joy will dog my every move and sunshine will be nothing to my halo. alone inside this murmuring of trees, the rain, the loud wind whooshes round the corner bricks, the building balances in air, space is filling up with white sky undulates, a banging swims up from the street, planks and two by fours pushed and pulled and dropped on metal while the leaves all trace a path of wind and waves Edges fluted, flutter rapid. Voices reach in through the windows, tendril up like lines. Here, cats are prowling, bugs are hiding, cats are jumping up, their eyes and tails wildly swing, tumult, a barrage of sky and trees that speaking dance the arching twist of wind and light. Just one more sound, a taste a touch of air across the skin, and then this rumbling, tumbling brain whose somersaults inside the skull will pitch a cry so high the cats will stop and twist their ears to hear it. much grew up in this neighborhood. I actually I lived up the block from 1977 to about 97 and further up with my parents and boyfriend of Fourteenth Street anyhow. This is what I think about this neighborhood in its current incarnation. <laughs> Let's bring back crime to the Lower East Side. <laughs> bring down those property values. Dirty up these brand new windows, break some glass, throw dirt on these brand new people, make it uncomfortable. Yes. <laughs> With the children of realtors and the trust fund kids, the aspiring, very rich with their carefully gelled, messy hair and achingly clean blue jeans with one Rip me. <laughs> Organize ourselves into battalions of 12. Sell baking soda out of glassine envelopes. Pretend to nod. Put a junkie back on every street corner. <laughs> on every street corner stage, gun battles, knife fights. No one has to know the bullets are blanks and the knife bleed, bleed fake blood. 
<laughs> inflatable models of people we used to know here. Put them to sleep in the night, in the park, on the benches, so the cops don't know who's who and keep arresting dummies. <laughs> we should all lay down on the pavement, pretend to drool, pretend to stink, refuse to move, be hoes, walk 3rd Avenue, be Johns, argue loudly, threaten with violence, exchange monopoly money, and take each other home. <laughs> Demand payment on unpaid debts put. Rage on every corner, from Union Square to East Broadway, from Broadway to Avenue D. When arrested, we'll call it freedom of expression, an art project, or just war. Hey. <laughs> My gift, me, in my hands, soft and folded like a wing. I enfold your arms in mine, wrap my legs around you. All limbs and teeth and lips, I grow to you like sun, out of you like earth, tremble in your breeze like leaves. I lean toward you like a birch tree in a hurricane, Lean out and curve and bend to meet your hand. So like a cat, I arch my back to meet your touch and purr deep in between my lungs. I know you now, how up and down you are. You gyroscope, you xylophone, you play so many musics, some grotesque and angular, a waltz for gargoyles, serenade for broken stones, others smooth as arcing earth is, where mountains are their softest, covered over with the leafed out trees, and gentle as a range of breasts. Newspaper headline, 29-year-old um, pediatric nurse, the aggressor, inside the ladies' room at Social on 8th Avenue. Skip out on rent in Pennsylvania. Check in to a cheap motel, Best Western. To work construction all day in cold I never get used to. Longing for my Moroccan home, I take a shower, put on cologne, my American baseball jacket, even my favorite shirt, go to a club called Social, looking good, a working man, money in my pocket. Get a drink, survey the room, one woman, she looks okay, two o'clock in the morning, though, out that late, dancing and sweating with all kinds of men, and she says no to me. I follow her down the basement stairs. Work so hard in this filthy, freezing city. This is how they treat me. In the bathroom, I push open the stall. She yells, comes at me. I defend myself, grab her arm. She pushes me. I punch her twice. She falls back into the stall. Blue blooms above, above the dress. Her eye looks bad. I leave her with her with her with her pants around her knees, looking like what she is. I leave the club, go to the store, grab a beer from off the shelf, stuff it in my shirt, <clears throat> leave, shaking the pain out of my knuckles, thinking. How am I going to work my hand all busted up like that? Oh.
I wrote this after Martha Stewart was arrested. <laughs> Thinking about, what is it like in that head? <laughs> Martha Stewart is afraid. She is afraid the leaves don't match. She goes out in the middle of the night with a yardstick. Her suspicions confirmed goes in and moans by the fireplace. In the bathroom, she contemplates her toes. The second toe is bigger than the first. She knows that's not how it should be. Goes back to bed, dreams. The coverlet does not match the sky. And the sky is not the color of the mantelless bedspread, and they are excavating in her yard and have found the bones of something messy. She is afraid. Someone is after her. She is afraid. Someone comes when she is at the store and messes up her drawers. All her things are color-coded, but when she comes home, everything is black or white. All her lovely pale blue china, all her pretty matching things drained away. The shapes are not concordant. Martha Stewart knows the centerpiece is the most important part of any table setting. In her dreams, this center will not draw the eye no matter